All right, so this is the home screen. You're, you guys are familiar with it. So we'll start with uh, recapping some of what we uh, what we did on, on last week, and that is uh, jobs and tallies. Um, jobs and tallies are really the the building blocks of the system. Everything, uh, most everything in the system. If you're seeing some information or a report or in the Pipe Explorer anywhere, if if it, it's pulling the information from the job. So what a job is. Um, is, is the container for inventory. It's the it's what holds your actual pipe or tubing or whatever the case might be. Um, so, yeah, so to, uh, to illustrate this point, we're going to go uh, create a job. Now, there's a couple of different ways to create a, uh, a job, but um, if this is the first time you're using the system or setting up your, uh, your inventory, then what we recommend is uh, receiving the, uh, the inventory in to your yard uh, from a master part, and we covered creating master parts in the last uh, webinar, so we can uh, certainly link you to that one. So, I am our company is Archon Data, so we're going to ship some pipe into our yard. We use the Oklahoma yard in our system, and as you can see in the shipping and receiving uh, screens, whenever you type in a yard, it'll auto-populate the uh, the information, so the email, all the contact information for that yard, um, and it'll be the same if you've uh, you've created the companies and set up the locations in your uh, in your system. What's that? Okay, so we're going to add an item. So like I said, we're, uh, if this is the first time you're using the system, um, you're going to be adding inventory from a master part since you don't already have uh, your inventory in the system. So <clears throat> once you have your parts set up, you can uh, filter down to the particular type of inventory you want to bring in. In this case, I'm going to bring in some 2 and 3 eighths uh, EUE uh, J55. So I'm going to select that. And here's where uh, you're going to enter the... Um, the amount that you want to bring in. For example, let's say I have 3,100 feet and 10 joints. The system will automatically populate the average. Oh, sorry. 100. Yeah, there we go. That would be really long pipe if we left it at that. So, okay, so the uh, system will auto-populate the average. That's called bulk. Um, we'll get into that here in a little bit. And I'm going to select a, uh, a rack for this to go to. Uh, in this case, it's going to be rack A2 on the um, in the Oklahoma pipe yard. I'll go ahead and mute that. Okay. All right. So once you click OK, it'll uh, show up here on our inbound truck, and you can see it's created a job number. So this is what I'm talking about. Every time you 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 create a job, it's to hold this inventory. So uh, this particular uh, batch of 100 joints, 3,100 uh, feet of pipe, oops, is uh, on job 8281. Let me write that down. 8281. Okay. So that's all we're going to receive in this uh, for, for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit complete, and uh, it'll show up on my rack. So um, to locate a job once you have a once you receive it, the, probably the easiest way is to use the search for pipe button. This is going to bring up the Pipe Explorer, and uh, for the majority of you guys, this is going to be where a lot of your work takes place. Um, it'll probably start something like this, and in this box, you can search for uh, job numbers, control numbers, uh, different types of pipe. But if you click on the Advanced button, it's going to bring up. Uh, a whole bunch of filters that you can uh, you can use to really narrow down your search because uh, I'll demonstrate here if uh, you click search just with no filters it's going to search for every job in your system and that's going to be huge it's going to be really hard to find things so you can see all this uh, all these jobs and information but if you uh, if you're working with a particular job or a particular type of pipe it's really useful to use these uh, these filters to to narrow it down so I know I'm looking for job 8281, which is the one I just created, I just received, and here we go. It uh, it cuts out all that other data, 
and just gives me what I want. So uh, in the system, you can open anything really by uh, double clicking on it. Um, and that holds true for most of the most of the screens on the system. So now uh, I double clicked on job 8281 and now we have the uh, the job screen. This holds all the information for this job. Everything from the specifications to the shipping information, uh, the, uh, the bulk totals, the tally totals, everything. So on this general tab, I'll just run you through all the information that can be stored here. You have the status, which is received, since we just received that. If you have a work order number, you can put that here. You have the location of the uh, of this job. In this case, it's in the Oklahoma yard on rack A2. You also have a description, which we could set. Uh, we could change to whatever we need to uh, to include there. And uh, some comments. Um, some people like to put in some information, some numbers here to to track by that. Um, you can see the company and receiver, um, PO numbers or AFE numbers, and uh, things like the unit of measure. In this case, I'm going to change that to joints. And if, you, uh, if you're tracking things by well, then uh, this is where you'll assign the well to this, uh, to this piece of this, this particular batch of pipe in this job. Um, once you open up the job, you can assign the well. I'm not going to do that for this one. Um, and the control number. So this is one of the uh, more powerful uh, attributes in the system for a, for a job. Uh, the control number allows you to tie multiple jobs together. Uh, a job can only hold one type of inventory. In this case, this can only hold 2 and 3 J55 EUE because that's what I assigned it to be. You can't mix different uh, different inventory items into a job. So um, in order to tie different jobs together, you can use uh, the control number. That's just one example. So I can, I can, I can make this control number whatever I want to be. Um, let's do 2225. And we're going to go ahead and save that. And we'll, uh, we'll, I'll show you how to use this control number um, when, we, when we tie it to another job here in a second. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? I know I've been talking for uh, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the company owner and receiver, um, they don't all have to be the same. In this case, it was the same because uh, I was receiving uh, new inventory that belonged to Archon Data, our company, into our yard. So it never changed hands, and it really never changed location. So um, if we see over here in the shipping tab, we can see it's shipping from Oklahoma, shipping to Oklahoma, and um, in the general tab, you can see the company and receiver are the same. If, for example, you were shipping or selling some pipe, then the uh, owner would change to whoever you were selling the pipe to. In this case, let's say Big Petroleum. And in the shipping tab, you would provide the uh, the uh, the appropriate destination of where where you were shipping it off to. If it belongs to your customer, exactly uh, as Maria just typed in. So if it belongs to your customer, uh, you're selling it to your customer. Then yes, you would populate that in there. But in this case, it's just uh, our pipe for now. All right. So okay, let's make this big. All right. So, as you can see, we have uh, different different tabs here. Uh, the specifications is what it pulls off from your master parts. So, whenever you set up your master parts, um, you really want to enter in as much information as possible. This is going to make it uh, very accurate. Uh, you can enter in anything from coupled weights to uh, coatings and uh, uh, any other special qualifications that you that you might want to track by. Um, but this is all getting pulled from your uh, your master parts list, so it's it's very important that you uh, set up your master parts correctly the first time. So you're not having to go into every job and uh, you know changing the grade or anything. If you have it, if you set up your master parts and take the time to do it properly, then all of this will be uh, filled out for you, and you won't have to do it job by job. In the shipping tab, um, you can see anything from the destination to the uh, to the uh, 
the carrier and truck numbers. This is all, the job gets this from the, uh, the receiving or shipping um, window. So whenever I brought in that truck, that inbound truck, and entered in that it was going to Oklahoma Yard, from Oklahoma Yard, this is where it's getting all that information. Um, again, it's very important to make sure you're shipping to and from the correct location, obviously. Now, our system allows you to attach documents in the Attachments tab to this job. Uh, you can attach anything from pictures of the uh, of the inventory or uh, bills of lading or Excel spreadsheets of a tally, um, whatever you'd like to attach. Um, and there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, the more traditional way is to just click on the um, on the yellow folder and that says attach, and then uh, pick a uh, a file that you want to attach. Oh, hold on. Why is it doing that? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, that's why. I'm doing images. There we go. Let's see. Excel workbook. Let's say I wanted to attach an Excel worksheet. I can just find it and click open. And there it is. It's attached to the uh, to the job now. Uh, alternatively, I'm going to do some scary stuff. I'm going to make this... Uh, a little bit small. Alternatively, you can actually just uh, find it on your desktop or wherever you have it saved, and drag it into the uh, to the box up here, and it will attach it automatically. You hit refresh, and there it is. You can see that I just dragged it in here, clicked refresh, and it's uh, it's automatically attached to there. Um, you can also do this for emails. If uh, let's say you're using Outlook. I'll show you how to do this right quick. There we go. All right, let's say I have a, an email. Let me find something. There we go. Here's from Maria. What you have to do with Outlook is uh, drag it to your desktop first from your Outlook, and then do the same thing. Just drag it to the job itself and hit the refresh button. And there you can see my email is uploaded there. That's uh, that's really important for uh, and really convenient for like releases and uh, approvals of, of of orders and stuff like that. Um, so basically, if you have it on your desktop, you can just drag it in to attach it, um, or you can find it on your uh, in your file somewhere. All right. So we're not going to cover these two other things because uh, that's more of advanced functionality. So let's go back to the general tab. All right. So let's talk about the status of a job. Does anybody have any questions first? Okay. So the status of a job essentially tells the system uh, what is happening to the pipe uh, at a particular point in time. In this case, it's received. So it's it's been put into my yard, and now it's sitting on a rack. Um, so if we want to uh, to change the status of a, a job, we can go to the uh, checkpoint button at the top of the screen. Um, there we go. And here we can see all the, uh, all the different statuses that we have uh, programmed into the system. Now these can be uh, customized um, and set up to your company, whatever, um, whatever you guys need to do. And if you guys need to do EMI inspections or threading or something like that, that's all done in the setup, uh, setup part and we can uh, customize that. Um, so for this one, let's say I want to put it in um, in storage. You can just click on that. Now the system acknowledges that is in storage. Uh, we can see that on the Pipe Explorer as well. If we go back and search for the uh, the same job again, we can now see that the status is storage. And uh, you can customize these to either show on the inventory or don't show. Um, for example, if we go to checkpoints uh, on order, um, if you have something on order, it's not going to show up in your inventory, right? Because you don't have it yet. It's, it's, it hasn't arrived yet. 
So they, they have different behaviors like that. Um, shipped is not going to show in your inventory. And um, all these other ones are pretty much going to show up on your inventory. Uh, and that's important with your reports, and we'll get we'll get into that here in a little bit. All right. So now that we have the uh, the basic idea of what a job is, um, we want to talk about tallies. The difference between bulk and tallies is tallies are uh, are measured joints. The length uh, is, is measured on those, while the bulks are averaged. So right here we have a hundred joints. Um, with an estimated total of 3,100 feet, giving us an average of 31 feet per joint. Now, a tally is going to be more specific. Uh, you could have joints of uh, 31 feet, 32 feet, 31 and a half. It, um, like you guys know, it, it varies from from joint to joint, and this is going to uh, this allows you to keep track of it uh, much more accurately than than an averaged uh, number is going to. So to uh, to enter in your there's two, there's two main ways to to tally something to tally your pipe you can uh, enter it in manually or you can import it so if you want to enter it in manually let's say you have a uh, inspection sheet on your you know on your desk uh, you can go over here to the enter joints button this is going to open up the uh, the tally screen for this job. Up here on the, on the top of the screen, you can hear you can see that we're uh, we're working with job 8281, and the part number, uh, as well as the status. So from here, you can basically enter in your measurements using your uh, your number pad. So let's say this one's 31.1, 32, 31.5. So yeah, you just enter in the number and and hit enter, and it'll go to the next line. So let's uh, let's enter in about five of them, and then uh, once you have all your joints entered in, all your measurements, uh, you can click on the Save button at the top of the screen. Now this is a very important uh, important window that pops up. This is going to ask you if you want to reduce the bulk by the joints that you entered. So if we click yes, which is what most of you are going to want to do. Um, it's going to take those joints off of the bulk averaged, the, the, the average pipe, and put them in the tally and reduce the, uh, the total footage and the, um, the average length per joint off of the bulk. So let me uh, click yes and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right. Yeah. So let's go back to the job header. All right, so now we're uh, now we're back at the job screen. Now you can see we have those that joint count of five joints that we entered here under the tally totals. You see that the joint it's recalculated the joint average for these five joints to be 31.62 feet and a uh, tally total of 158.1 feet. If you go up to the totals, the bulk totals, you can see it's reduced the uh, the footage, the joint count. And recalculated the average. So instead of having the uh, 31 foot average, now we have a slightly lower 30.97 average. Um, and again, this allows you to keep track of it, you know, very very accurately. Um, it'll even populate load weight and uh, tonnage based on your uh, master parts. So that's why it's it's, it's important to keep uh, your master parts set up properly and uh, and accurately, so you can calculate the weights and uh, properties, uh, you know, correctly. All right, so that's how you enter them, enter uh, tallies in manually. Does anybody have any questions over that? All right, so um, the other way you can do a tally, uh, you can enter in a tally, is to import them. Um, Oil Country OS works with uh, all known tally devices, and we can import from all of them. Um, makes it much easier to uh, to get your tallies entered. Uh, to do so, all you have to do is click on the import button at the top of the uh, job and tally uh, screen. It's going to ask you where you want to import it from. Uh, as you can see, we can either uh, we can bring it in from uh, an Excel file uh, or a uh, you know any one of the tally devices. 
So let's do a Microsoft Excel file. Let's see, where do I have that? Let me just find my Excel sheet right quick. All right, so whenever you open it, it's going to show your tallies here in this gray screen um, from your Excel file. And it's going to show you the uh, the joint count and total footage um, automatically for you. And then you can just click on the Finish thing, on the Finish button here at the corner. And it's it's going to uh, it's going to basically do what we did manually, but save you some time on it. So if you have Excel, uh, you have tallies on Excel, that's an easy way to do it. So uh, there is a link on the support site, support.archondata.com, uh, and, and there uh, is, if you just search for import tallies, there is an Excel spreadsheet that you can download, and it's the format that you can import, uh, whether it's just, you know, straight OCTG tallies or uh, serialized joints like drill pipe, um, you can there's there's several there you can download that and use that um, with Excel and just plug your tallies and serial numbers in there and then import them in our system and that's what he was looking for we kind of were, got busy today and, and forgot to find that for him so it's really super simple uh, did you I sent Carlos one did you did you get that uh, I'm still looking for it I don't Okay, awesome. So anyway, you just uh, you find that file and, and uh, just import it and then just draw off side of it. All right. So here, okay, here it is. So here's my uh, Excel sheet. Um, let me just save it somewhere and then I'll show you how to import it. Let's just put it on my desktop. All right, so again, we click on the import button at the top of the job tally screen. And then we select the uh, Microsoft file. And uh, you can do by serial if you guys have, uh, you know, tallies by, with, with serials on them. Uh, in this case, we only have the links on this sheet, so we'll just choose that. Um, Okay, so you just open it, and here we go. This is what I was talking about. It'll show you uh, your tallies here on this screen, um, and it shows you the joint count and the total footage. So it does essentially what we did in the enter joint screen manually, uh, but it does that all automatically. Uh, here you can even see the, the part number and the uh, tally number. So here you can review it. You can even edit it should something be incorrect or you need to make some changes, and it'll automatically recalculate everything for you. So once you're done uh, double-checking through everything, you can click Finish. And again, this is the important part. Um, for the most part, you're going to want to reduce the bulk from the original tally. This is going to take it out of the averaged joints and put it into the, uh, the properly tallied joints. So click Yes. All right. Now you can see that's added to the uh, those those 12 joints that we imported have been added to the five that we already had. And uh, it's taken it out of bulk and put it into tally. All right, another important feature of the uh, job and tally screen is the, uh, is the print button here. Um, you can do all sorts of things and print all sorts of, uh, of forms from this button. 
uh, whether it be a, a bill of lading, a load slip, um, or even the tally. For example, that tally, the 17 joints that we have now, let's, uh, let's click on that. So you click on print tally, it's going to load this form. And here we go. It's going to, let me make this big. It's going to give you exactly what we have. We have 17 joints, all their measurements here. You can also have the serial numbers if, um, if you so chose. Um, it has the part number information, all the specifications of that pipe, the description, um, the shipping information here from uh, when we brought it in. Again, it's very important that you uh, enter in the correct shipping information because, as you can see, it's tied to a lot of things. Um, the job information, the location of all of this pipe, and the control number. Um, so yeah, that's a really great way to to keep track of your tallies. Um, let me see, what else can we do with the print button? Here's the print with serial. If you uh, keep track of tallies with a uh, serial number, you can do that. You can also print the bulk. Um, this is going to average it out, so uh, the bulk is always uh, averaged. Um, you can also save it. Our system allows you to uh, export things to Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheets. Um, if you uh, click on Save Joints to Excel, let's pick a location right here, yeah, just on the desktop. We can save that. And here you go. Here we have the, uh, the 17 joints that we have tallied up so far and their lengths. Again, if you want to keep track of the serial number, um, it will show that here as well. So that's an easy way to get all your uh, tallies uh, back into Excel should you need to. Um, you can also email most of these things directly from the application. Um, if you have it set up uh, to use Outlook, you can click on the... Uh, on the send button and let me open Outlook right quick. Yeah. All right, so we just click on the send button. Where is my? Uh oh. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm in the debug version again. Okay, so it's uh, it's not going to work on the debug version. Uh, I do a lot of testing, and I'm always in this one. Uh, usually, we're on the live version, so it actually works in the live version. You can just click send, and it's going to bring up a. Uh, it's going to create an Outlook uh, send uh, an Outlook email with the uh, uh, with the email and and the content already populated, and it's going to attach your tallies on there as well. So uh, you can just send that out on the fly from the system. Okay. So back to the job screen. All right. So now let's look at the Pipe Explorer. We're going to look at the same job in the Pipe Explorer. Um, if you don't recall, to uh, get to the Pipe Explorer, you simply click on the Search for Pipe button on the uh, home screen. Um, oh, let me pause here and... Uh, uh, does anybody have any questions? I don't see any, but... All right. So let's find that job again. It was job 8281. So here we see uh, our job. We just found it. Now, it's uh, 2 and 3 eighths J55. So if let's say I forget the job number. I don't know what uh, which particular job I'm looking for. Um, I can search by um, by pipe size, the two and three eighths, and by the grade. Let's see. That's going to bring up all the two and three eighths in J55 in the in the system. All right, so that's still pretty broad. So we have this on a status of storage, so we can narrow it down even further. Yeah. So. We still have quite a few, quite a few results. Um, in this case, I can, we can easily see it from here. But if uh, you know where it's at or where it's supposed to be at, in this case, we have it in the Oklahoma yard. That's where I shipped it to. We can just enter that in as well. And there you go. Um, you can even do 
get as specific as racks uh, in that particular yard. So these filters make it very, very easy to to really filter out all the information you don't want and just kind of drill down on uh, the particular jobs that you're looking for. Um, another important filter that we have is the control number. So let's look at everything here in the Oklahoma yard. Let's see. Let's clear this and just search for everything in the Oklahoma yard. All right. So here is 81, 82, 81. That's, that's the job we were working with just a second ago. And we have a control number on this job of 2225. Now, I can open any one of these other jobs. Let's do 8280 and assign to it the same control number. Eight two two. No, it's two 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 five. There we go. All right, and I can just save. And you can do this. You can assign the same control number to as many jobs or as little jobs as you like. Uh, this makes it really easy to to tie them in together. Um, in case you're doing uh, shipments on, uh, you know, multiple trucks, you can you can try tie them in that way. Um, so I can just search for two 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 five under the control number, and it's going to bring up those two uh, those two jobs. Um, here in the uh, in the results window, you can actually customize, uh, and we went over this last time. You can customize what uh, fields show. So we're showing control numbers. So I'm just going to find that. Where's my control number? Here we go. I'm going to drag it. You can drag and drop these uh, any of these columns in whatever order you'd like. So if you if you need to see some uh, you know particular field more than another you can either remove it or just put it you know however you like. So now I can see the control number. All right, and then we have two jobs, one in storage and one in received. So what else can you do here from the pipe explorer? Well, you can see all these buttons right here and pretty much most of the basic functions that you, we we covered in the in the job and tally screen, you can actually do directly from the Pipe Explorer. For example, I can checkpoint a job from uh, from the Pipe Explorer. So I can just select uh, 8281. That's a, a, a pre-existing job, or 8280. Here we go. Let's do this one. I can click on the checkpoint button with it selected and change its uh, its status. So let's change it to storage. You can see it changed it the status of 8280 back to storage. You can also do this for multiple jobs at a time. Over here you have a little checkbox under the selected um, tab and you can select multiple jobs and you can batch checkpoint different jobs. Um, this just kind of saves you some time if you're doing multiple uh, multiple things at once or dealing with the same thing in multiple instances. So let's checkpoint these to inspection. You can see now it, it changed both of them. Uh, that makes it really easy to do a, a lot of work with little effort. Um, another important feature that you can do here that we haven't talked about is the transfer. Uh, transferring pipe is a really powerful tool. Uh, you can do it by selecting a, um, a job and clicking on the transfer button. This is going to bring up uh, all the different options you have on how to transfer something. Um, easy transfer and advanced to job transfer are going to be uh, probably the two most common uh, ones that you're going to use. Uh, we'll cover some of these other ones and uh, some of them we'll, we'll leave off for more advanced uh, lessons. So let's just start with an easy transfer. Uh, you have several options on how you want to do this. Um, in this case, we're transferring 8281, job number 8281. You can transfer by bulk, so the average joints on there. Or you can transfer by tally. Or you can transfer the whole job should you need to. So let's just transfer some by bulk. Basically, what I want to do is transfer some from 8281 to 8220, since I know they're both the same, uh, same type of inventory. So let's click on transfer by bulk. And again, you have several options. You can transfer by joints and footage transfer by only joints or transfer by only footage. So let's do transfer by joints and footage. 
here I can select exactly how many joints I want to transfer. So let's select five and let's say we know that it's going to be average of 31. Let's do some math. Five times 31, about 155 feet. All right, and you can enter in a comment. All right, so you just click finish. It's going to think for a sec. All right, and there we can see that uh, Where did it go? Let's see. Joy count 17. Yep, so that's how you transfer it. Um, it it's on here now. We can see this by the uh, activity log. Um, let's see back over here. Two, five, so all those are all the same. You can also receive and ship things from here. Uh, let's change the, the status of a uh, inspection here. Let's go ahead and checkpoint this to on order. So if you have something on order, it's not in your inventory yet. Um, it's basically saying that you've ordered it, but it's not arrived. So if you, uh, instead of having to like open up the job and uh, really drill down on it, you can simply search for all your on order jobs uh, that you've received and click on the receive button. This is going to open up an inbound truck. And here you can enter in the shipping information. In this case it's Archon Data. We're still the owners. And we're going to the Oklahoma yard. This is going to make it really easy to, to receive all your on-order uh, on order inventory since you're not having to uh, you know, necessarily open up the sales order. As long as you know how to find it or where it's supposed to be, where it's going, then you can uh, find your on-order uh, jobs, click the receive button, and get them into your yard. So after that, you just hit complete, and it's going to put them in the in the destination yard. In this case, it's going to go to the Oklahoma yard. All right. So let me just check that checkpoint that back to uh, let's do storage. You can also ship directly from here. Uh, again, just select a job that you want to ship and ship it. Um, now, it's very important to note that there's a difference between transferring something or relocating something and shipping it. Uh, transferring, sh shipping and receiving is, 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 is important to keep track of on your in and out reports. Um, it's essentially putting something on a truck and moving it around. Uh, Transferring is a little bit different since you're going from job to job or um, creating new jobs out of, a, out of a transfer or just moving it to a different rack. Um, so if you're moving something from yard to yard, it's, it's very important that you, uh, that you ship it properly. So let's, uh, let's ship some of this by bulk, and we're going to do it by joints. So we have 78 joints available. We're going to ship 10. Um, that's going to be a 308.36 feet on average since we're doing bulk. It's not a, not exact. So then we can just click finish. And again, it's going to open up a, um, a outbound truck this time. So since we're shipping it from a location, it's going to automatically populate your shipping from. Um, obviously, you can't really change this because this is where the inventory is at. It's currently located. So... Uh, that's going to stay the same. And here we can ship it to a different yard. Um, let's ship it to, where is docks? And okay, so now we have, we're shipping it to docks from our Oklahoma yard. And here you have the job. In this case, we selected um, job 8283. Um, we shipped from job 8281. We're shipping it to a new location, so it's creating a new job. Here you can see job 8283. Those 10 joints that I pulled off of uh, job 8281 now have their own job number. This is, this is where the uh, control number becomes really important. Uh, you can tie these jobs back to their parent job. Uh, 
and I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and complete that and complete the jobs and tallies now. All right, so I'm going to refresh this. And you can see that job 8283 is no longer shown um, here in this screen because we shipped it off of this location. So now if we see uh, Oklahoma Yard, we can see that 8283 is not here because it's in docs. Let's go look at it in the docs. All right. And where is it at? There we go. So here we have eight, job 8283 in the docs. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to the Oklahoma yard right quick. All right. So now we're, we're filtering for everything in the Oklahoma Yard. Now, by default, you're going to be searching for things that aren't completed. Uh, when a job is complete, you're essentially telling the, uh, telling the system that it's no longer in inventory. So you can see the complete uh, section right here, the complete tab. None of these are checked. If I go up here and click on the check to search for completed items, it's going to bring up a much larger search. It's going to bring up... Um, all the items that are there and that are no longer there that were completed in here. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's pretty big. Here we go. So this is essentially a history of what's been in this yard since we're searching by location. Um, and you can see all the statuses of it. Uh, a lot of these are going to be uh, shipped. Since once they're shipped, they're no longer in inventory. It's going to complete it for you. Um, <coughs> all right. Does anybody have questions so far? I know I've been talking for a little bit. I don't see any of them in the chat. All right, so let's go ahead and search for current inventory stuff that's not complete. All right. No. You're muted. All right. There we we'll go. Talk for just a moment. Um, and I just wanted to go over this real quick. So basically, uh, what Carlos was reviewing was how to find things in the system using Pipe Explorer, which Pipe Explorer is really where most inventory managers live. And I think that what you have to keep in mind with this is. Um, number one, obviously you're going to try to find material to ship it out, right? Or you're auditing or you just want to see what you have in the system. There's a couple of things to keep in mind. Like he said, you want to drill down by location. If you just hit the location and hit search, it's going to show you everything in the yard. Then you can drill down by size, weight, and grade. Or you can use some of the other filters. So, Carlos, if you want to check the search for completed items. Yeah. And then I want you to do a, a date range is, is today, right? And then I want to look for the status of shipped. Okay, now do a search. And it's going to show you everything that shipped out today. And you could do this. So if you wanted to do a date range, um, go back to the date instead of is. I want you to do is between, um, yeah, the first and today and hit search. It's going to show you everything that shipped out of the yard in that date range. So basically what it does is when you ship out of uh, inventory, that's not, it doesn't go away. Like an, an Excel spreadsheet, if you take it off the spreadsheet, there is no history. It's gone. You don't know what happened. Um, and there's no way to go and audit it, right? But with this system, this is why you're replacing your spreadsheets with this system, because it, can, it has an accurate inventory and history. Everything that happened, um, you can go back and retrace your steps, or you can run reports on what happened. Um, and this is how you find it. 
No matter so, what you do in the system, it's going to keep track of it. So you can always go back and see uh, see exactly what you did, or if there was an error, anything. You can you can always find it in the system. And if you want to clear that, Carlos, hit clear up there, um, and do a date type date type the first one, um, say last month, and status of shipped. and check for completed items and hit search it's going to bring up everything that you shipped last month also you could do a received right everything that was received last month so you can really narrow your uh, searches down and find everything in the system any questions about that okay you can um, I'll mute myself but I just want to make sure everybody was clear on how to use this as well as uh, the saving and printing of this and uh, the, as for the saving and printing, basically everything you could do in the job with saving and printing, you can do directly from the Pipe Explorer. So let's say you want to uh, print the bill of lading for this job that we shipped out um, this uh, last month, 8118. You can click the arrow next to the print button and click bill of lading. And it's going to think for a second, and here we go. Here you have the bill of lading. It has all the shipping information, all the cargo information and everything. Uh, and you don't even have to open up the job. You can do that directly from the Pipe Explorer. Um, you can also save uh, save to Excel, send to Excel, and all that stuff here. So the same thing you can do in the inventory screen. You can do directly from the Pipe Explorer, which is really useful. Um, let's look at, let's see. Uh, re the refresh button, I'll just touch on that right quick. Uh, anytime you make any changes or save something, uh, just click the refresh. It makes sure that all the information that you're seeing is accurate and up to date. Um, otherwise, you might be seeing some old information. Um, we cover the checkpoint button. You can't complete from uh, from the the Pipe Explorer this uh, this complete button. You'll have to do that in the jobs, and it's it's you, it's better to do it from the job just so you're uh, you're very uh, aware of what what exactly you're completing again you can transfer here um, let's say let's search for actual the stuff that we have in the Oklahoma yard right now all right so we were working with job 8281 all right so let's say I want to move job 8281 to a different rack. Right now it's in the Oklahoma yard on rack A2. Um, the transfer button is basically how you want to do this. Um, you can click on transfer and relocate. Uh, relocate doesn't change any of the any of the amounts in the inventory. Again, it like the name suggests, it just changes the location. So it pre-populates the Oklahoma yard um, and you can uh, select a different rack, in this case A4. And different rack um, and if you're trying to move from yard to yard uh, it's probably better to do a ship instead of a uh, instead of a transfer uh, just so you can keep track of it on your in out reports so we'll just click relocate and there you go you can see that it is now located on rack a4 um, you have some more advanced uh, transfers, um, transfer to a different job uh, if, if you need to move it, move uh, move some joints out to, to another job. Um, that one only works if you have the same part number, obviously. And you can also transfer to a different master part. Um, let's say it's not really 2 and 3 HJ55, but it was something else. Let's, uh, let's do one of those. Yeah, there we go. It's only going to let you transfer to another uh, 2 and 3 HJ55, right? You can't transfer tubing to drill pipe or, um, you know, drill pipe to, to casing. It's not going to let you do that. The system is smart enough to, to know that that's not something you're going to want to do. So you can just use the transfer to master part to uh, transfer like inventory between master parts. Again, you want to be very careful with that one. Uh, make sure you're, you're uh, transferring to the correct things. Um, we covered the ship and receive button here. Um, adjust. Okay, Maria, do you think we should cover adjust here? 
All right. So we'll leave a just off for another one. Let's do reconcile. So, yeah, Maria, why don't you uh, why don't you show them how to do the reconcile? Um, let's get Maria on here, guys. Does anybody have any questions while we're waiting? Hey guys, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> I have so much fun with these things, right? Uh, if you'll give me the mouse, I'll show you some uh, some fancy fit work when it comes to um, managing your inventory. So here's the thing, if you guys are new to the system, you're going to make mistakes. Everybody does. Uh, I still kind of make mistakes every once in a while and I have to go and fix it. When you're thir the first 30 days, uh, somebody's going to put in the wrong amount or uh, something and you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to do a hard count after 30 days and you're going to reconcile, right? Maybe if you're like this super uber admin person, um, you might not make a mistake, but if there's five people doing it at the same time, they're all new. Uh, you're going to want to do this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this out, and I'm going to go to Oklahoma, my yard, right? And I'm going to do a search, and uh, I'm going to do a rack audit, right? Um, so basically what I want to do is uh, I want to go out and do a hard count. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the home screen, and I'm going to go to reports. This is really valuable, guys. Uh, so, um, really watch carefully on this one. I'm going to hit inventory, okay? And I want a rack audit report. So I'm going to I'm going to pick this report, the rack audit. I'm going to go to build filters, and I'm going to say uh, the location is the Oklahoma. It's my location, right? and I'm going to run the report, okay? So this is going to tell me everything that I have on my racks. So I can go out into the yard and I can do a hard count and write it down. Give me just a second. So basically what you're going to want to do is print this out, put it on a clipboard or something, or, you know, you can do it on somebody's back if you want to. These go to meetings are slow and then we're passing stuff back and forth over here. Did I hit run? Yeah, I think you did. Um let me okay. see. Yeah. All right. So anyway, I'm I'm must have a lot of data in there. So anyway, you're going to run rack audit report and you're going to print it out. And uh, while that's running, can I get back over there? Let me see. I lost control over this screen. Yeah, you're good to go. Okay. Well, the go to meetings not helping. So. Uh, can you click on Pipe Explorer for me? Sure. Since I'm trying to take control over your screen. Mm. Just wait for a second. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, I can... Okay, make me the presenter, and I'll go back in there. That'll make it a little easier. Okay, let's go in there. All right, so if I have control over it, that might make it a little easier. So let's, this, this is easier. So I'm going to go to inventory. Let's do that again. I'm going to show you this report because it's really 
valuable. If you're maintaining inventory in a yard, you're going to want to do this. So I'm going to go to the rack audit, go to build filter, and I'm going to go to my location, um, which is Oklahoma, my default, right? And I'm going to hit run. It's ought to run a lot faster. I say that. Is my report broken, Carlos? Uh, I don't know. Let me uh, let me look into that. Hey guys. Even Microsoft has issues sometimes. I'd love to say we're perfect, but we're not. So if you ever run into any problems like this, just let us know, okay? And we will get them uh, fixed up. I didn't get the patch this morning, by the way. So, okay. But well, we're about to wrap this up, so let me show you how to reconcile, and then we'll go figure out why my report didn't run. Okay. Let's do this again. All right. So search on pipe. So let's say your report printed properly. And uh, we're going to go in uh, the building and we're going to uh, reconcile the racks, right? So I'm going to search on racks and here we have A1, right? And we're going to, let's just say I want to only do stuff in storage. Okay. Um, so all you're going to do is right click and view reconciled properties, right? And what it's going to do, it's going to open up this little button thingy right here, okay? I'm going to drag this around so I can see, uh, I can see number one, what rack it is, and I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to show uh, the joint count, the rack, so I'm, ma I'm managing rack A3 and it I've got 16 joints on there, not 15. So I'm just going to hit the button, adjust and reconcile, and see it shows 15 joints on there. And I'm going to check this little box right here that says set this current job's current balance. I'm going to adjust it, right? And it's 16 joints, and I made a boo-boo, right? So 16 joints is... 511 feet. See, I clearly made a mistake. Um, so I'm just going to say correct error on the adjustment, right? And hit finish reconcile. And so it's going to fix that. So it's 16 joints, 511 feet. Does that make sense? And I can set uh, this little button right here. It shows that I adjusted it. And that one's reconciled. So I can go to my next one. So it's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to clear this all out, and we're going to do it real quick again. I'm going to go to Oklahoma Yard, and I'm going to search, and I'm going to search my racks, and I'm going to go and do C1, okay? And C1 has, uh, it Let's say B1 is correct. I'm not going to reconcile that one, but uh, C1 has nine joints on it. Adjust and reconcile. Set this job's current balance. It's nine joints, okay? And it's 31. Let's say 0.5 is 283. And then it's correct. Okay. 
joint counts. Okay? It's that easy. So what this really comes in handy for is not only your own yard, but let's say you've got a third party yard and you're managing that too. So whenever your third party yard sends their um, their audit reports, their inventory reports at the end of the month, you can go into your system and adjust them to actuals. Now let's say they're consistently off five or ten joints every month. Well, that's kind of a red flag and you need to kind of look into that and see what's happening. Um, if they're managing your stuff on spreadsheets, well, there's a problem there and so you should probably, you know, dig into that and see if pipe is, you know, going someplace it's not supposed to. So if that makes sense. Um, I think is there, I'm going to open up uh, the microphone and let you guys talk. And my apologies, I'll get my report fixed there. Um, so I've opened up all the microphones. You guys can talk. Uh, so based on what we just went through, he went over the uh, tallies number one, okay, what they do, where our system gets its information, right, um, the checkpoints, the racks and location, um, all that stuff, right, specs, shipping and receiving, um, and whether it's bulk or tallied, how to get your tallies into the system, how to print tally reports, or just hit the send button and send them to the owner, right? So if you're managing somebody else's pipe and you just hit the send button, it's going to send that tally via email to the owner, okay? Um, it also, he showed you how to get bill of lading. There it is. So I've got myself set as the owner to this one. And notice it connected my tally to it. If I had any tallies, okay, your logo is going to be in there, right? Um, so I showed you how to do all that stuff, how to import tallies. Um, there's also great places on our support site where you can get more information about the Disto, which is co costs like three hundred fifty dollars. You can buy them instead of rent them. Works directly with our system. And then in, we, he also showed you how to use the Pipe Explorer right, through the filters, how to use the transfer, how to ship from here, and then we showed you how to adjust and reconcile. Is there anything that you guys are needing to know to start using the system right away that we're not touching on yet? I know you've got a lot of questions, Karina, but Coleman, um, does this help you? Coleman? Coleman actually stepped out. Oh, okay. Uh, so is does that help you a little bit in going into your system and finding things? Yeah, that, it, this is cool. Okay. And I apologize for the hiccups that we're having. Um, we'll figure that out. Uh, Kayla, did you have any questions? No, ma'am. Jamie? Uh, no, ma'am, not at this time. Okay. Karina? Anything? I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um, now, uh, Carlos is going, he recorded this, and so he's going to upload this. We're probably going to edit it a little bit and fix maybe a couple things, but then he's going to upload it and he's going to send out uh, a newsletter. I'm going to send out a newsletter for uh, next week's uh, webinar that we're going to be holding, and I'll put a link to... Uh, the uh, the uploaded one a version of this one once I finish editing it I'll put a link to that one in that newsletter so um, okay and you can find the previous one on the email the newsletter for this uh, webinar you can find the first one we did there's a link to that one on there always remember especially if you're new on the home screen of our application there's a big help button click on it and you can find video tutorials you can chat with our support agents right? There's always somebody around. Um, you can 
you know, drill down on things that you're looking for, specifics. Also, a great way to get started is if you just click on the Getting Started button here. Read the key concepts. It's really helpful because this system's not like anything else that's out there. This is for pipe, right? And so it's really, uh, it's different than like maybe the Microsoft products that you're used to using. Um, this is really very helpful. And by the time you get to the bottom, you're really kind of on your way. We also have a, a YouTube channel that you can kind of dig into different videos that show step by step, and they're really helpful. So um, if there's not a link on the home page, then we probably ought to put one on there today. Yeah, we can put that on there for you. Okay. And maybe a link to our other webinars. So, yep. all right, guys. Um, and then if anybody has uh, needs help, like I said, go to live chat or give us a call, uh, and you can um, find our phone numbers on any of our websites, okay? And I'll let you go. Thank you. Are you asking me a question or? Okay, guys. I'm going to close this down. Call us, email us, let us know if you have any other questions, and if you've got any suggestions on how we can do better in the future, let us let me know. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.